This is Storytellers and Story Sellers live on tape. You're listening to me, Vineet Kanabar, on the IVM Podcast Network. Every episode on this show, we talk to bigwigs from the entertainment industry, whether on the creative side or on the business side. We've spoken to actors, directors, musicians, writers, founders, CEOs, business people. I take special delight in bringing folks who are creating entertainment for the big screen. And when I say the big screen, I mean OTT. Cinema's not the big screen anymore. And I'm delighted to be joined by Tanya Bami, series head at Netflix India. Tanya, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. We're going to do this weird thing where we introduce you quickly and then go into a break. So going into a break, back after these messages with Tanya Bami talking about all the cool things that Netflix is doing in India right after these messages. Welcome to the show. I read somewhere that you called out 2022 as the year that was going to be your year at Netflix India. How's that going for you? You tell me. What do you think? I think there's been a spate of amazing shows that you guys have done, whether it's in reality, whether it's scripted, this comedy. I mean, from the outside, it looks like you're taking some serious strides towards making very interesting, almost never seen before kind of stuff for the Indian audience. But how's it going on the inside? I'd love to know. The inside has been, like I keep saying, we've been hard at work. The back-end kitchens have been sort of drumming up I what I hope is a storm. And yes, you're right. We really do look at 2022 as the year where it all sort of kicks in from a series perspective. The film side has been, you know, delivering some amazing titles mm-hmm. even before mm-hmm. 2022. And essentially, we as a team came together around 2019. And the series format is a very immersive format and add to that COVID and complete lockdowns. And it's really not an easy feat to accomplish to put together a series slate. Right. And that's what we've been doing. You know, just trivia, 70% of our team, the creative team has been hired during the lockdown. So we've actually not met in person until things opened up and yet we were there writing, developing, pre-production, prepping and doing all of that just so that, you know, we can roll out this slate. And I think even actually before 22, July onwards mm-hmm. with Kota Factory and then Aranyak and then Decoupled, Minnal Murli, the Kapil Sharma special in Jan, Ye Kali Kali Aankhe. And since then, thankfully, it's all been rolling out. We've been getting so much love. And contrary to whatever anyone we may say, I always say that we are doing exceptionally well. It is really, you know, everything that we planned and we prepped for is thankfully knock on wood happening. Well, the sky's the limit and there's a lot of excitement coming up. There's so many exciting titles that are rolling out every month. The kind of diversity, the variety that we bring, the value that we bring and we hope to as our strategy, as our ambition is rolling out. So 2022 is definitely ours. Inshallah, sounds amazing and no matter what is being said about oh, Netflix is doing this, globally this, that, whatever. I think the buzz around Netflix shows in India just shows that you're creating stuff that the audience is lapping up, right? And it is something that augurs very well for your content strategy. Let me ask you this, right? Now, Netflix has been around in India six years. You said the team that, that you're on came together in 2019. Working in the lockdown requires new processes, new ways of working together and stuff like that. What's the journey been like Ever since then, can you share a few learnings that you've had along the way that have stood you in good stead as you plan this amazing year? It's a really exciting journey. Let me just begin by saying that. And uh, it's been challenging. We've had this start-stop, start-stop in productions, which is really, you know, anyone will tell you it's really not exciting or it's fruitful. energy sapping also. Yeah, it's well, very, right? you're just ready to go and then there's a new wave and then you're like, okay, pull the cruise back. Yeah. And that's not exciting, but... Oh my God, our creator community, they are so, so amazing with the kind of, you know, dedication and rigor. I think really what happened for us as a team was that we used the lockdown, especially the first one, I think in 2020, we put our nose to the book and we developed so many amazing shows. It gave us really focused time. And I think people also, I mean, plugging out one fine day is just disorienting. So I think a lot of uh, the creative community just actually sat back 
and wrote some beautiful stories. We heard amazing stories. We've got a slate, you know, which is under development, I think, till beyond 2024. Right. So that's really the silver lining, if I may, around this really grim phase. So amazing stories from our creative community. That was one outcome. The second was, um, you know, really we we experienced that. there's no stopping anyone we found so many amazing ways to overcome the challenges we've had virtual table reads with like 25 30 actors we've had narrations we've had casting discussions so it was really about how do we get beyond any limitations that the times and the challenges present to us mm-hmm. and eventually whether it's our production teams or our post production teams internally or up with our partners everyone was just constantly finding ways to make this slate happen so it was actually a very exciting time very invigorating really to see the you know uh, the human spirit i will say Absolutely. to just like say that we are going to make this happen we want our title on netflix and we want to tell this story primarily and we've just been so overwhelmed with the kind of response and support and encouragement that we we've, we've tried to do everything we can to support our creators and our partners and the results are rolling out that's awesome and i mean hard relate to the creative spirit that you're talking about i i hear it from so many folks on this show or outside when i talk to them that the pandemic period while it has had its challenges we talked about the stop start nature of production i think everyone's taken that time to really put down the stories they want to tell right and i'm so glad that it's resulted in some amazing stuff coming out on netflix let me ask you this and Netflix has always been known for pushing boundaries in storytelling whether it's the themes the narratives the technology i think in india as well now that you've been around for 6 years there's been so much boundary pushing that's happening can you help us learn what you have learned or can you share with us what you have learned about the indian audience right what kind of genres they prefer are they more receptive to newer talent on screen or or of it i'd love to know what sort of emerging principles and emerging learnings that you're getting in your content creation. Okay, that's many questions. Great. It is. I, I do that. I do that. I have this thing where I ask like seven questions and then yeah. I'm like, "Ha, ye to simple hai." But, <laughs> no, no, <laughs> it is it's a it's a very fun set of questions. They all linked so I understand where you're coming from. I just sort of just semantics but I'll say that not really sure if we can be looked at as being around for 6 years yes we've been in the country available sure. to the country in 6 years but local programming barring the initial you know the the giant titles like sacred games and delhi crime which are like our flagship in mm-hmm. that sense like I was mentioning previously we as a team sort of came together the india team really came together in 2019 so it's right. just been a few years right. and um, I think we've delivered as fast as is humanly possible i will say series is so immersive that like a i don't know what a regular series is but essentially just the base period to sort of put something together and launch it on netflix with all the subtitles and dubs etc that we need is a minimum of 2 years right and in like i keep saying add to that the pandemic so we've launched stuff in like literally 2 years despite the pandemic and that's really been the biggest challenge learnings i think we learn every day we right. learn we adapt and we pivot and that's really one of the most special things about netflix mm-hmm. whether it's you know what we do from a content perspective or whether what we do for member experiences if it's better for our members if it's better for our content if it's better for our business we move that's one of like our fun, we are very very um agile in that sense right. so that's one of the fundamentals with which we work if it's not working to sort of further our strategy or our growth or our content we will sort of move and whatever that may mean in terms of the kind of content we choose or the kind of voices we talk with so it's it's agility is really like the fundamental i think uh, the pandemic has also i'm sorry i'm referring to it so much i can't believe it really it's probably because it's we just talked about it right, right at the beginning is already saying it's over is it really but it's over no but also content and the pandemic became synonyms you know mm-hmm. everyone was watching we have we are so inherently curious about our world that when you're just locked up at home what's your window to the world yeah. it became streaming to a large degree and we are very grateful about that i think people uh, sampled uh, and really explored every kind of content the kind of uptake that we saw 
say in the documentary genre in mm-hmm. India from 2019 mm-hmm. to 2020 it was crazy you know we were cooking our unscripted slate back then and just how encouraging it was to really see the uptake of titles like bad boy billionaires or crime detectives or burari the house of secrets it was yeah i know uh, <laughs> the f- flashbacks yeah but a nice one a sensitive yeah, yeah, yeah. handled one yeah. yeah documentary suddenly became i would say a sort of cult exploration for our members and right. uh, i think uh, they enjoy the novelty of finding a genre like documentaries in the way netflix does it it has an enhanced i think uh, aesthetic for sure. it has a narrative quality almost like our uh, scripted shows right. and actually we believe that people enjoy it because uh, yes fact is more riveting than fiction for sure so you know it is also juicier sometimes <laughs> documentaries were something that saw an uptake people experimented with crime and comedy at almost at the same level you know people always ask us that do you think because everyone's locked up do you think people are watching more comedy and it's it yes fundamentally yes but yeah. just like crime and comedy like they're like a sliver apart right so it's it's really about diversity i think and that's really at the heart of our strategy uh, as well do you think well. they're like palette cleansers for each other is is that how how it's emerging i you know i think it's uh, content is very uh, personal and mood sure. dependent so it it's really about how i'm feeling today and that's right. really the aspiration with the vast library of content that we have i think that's really our aspiration that every night should be a netflix night because every night can be a netflix night you know we have a masaba masaba but we also have a house of secrets we have a kapil sharma but we also have a mai right. we have a fame game and then we have indian predator so it's it really depends on where your mind's at what you're feeling like today so i think diversity is what our audiences are enjoying and um, we are really happy with the kind of slate that we have coming up you know there's uh, we're launching the trailer of uh, fabulous lives of bollywood wives today right <laughs> we had indian match making i think last weekend it's been all over yes <laughs> every single whatsapp Seema group i'm on is just all the way <laughs> yeah man and i think some very clever candidates yes. as well this time around right i think good challenges for yeah, her yeah. to navigate i yeah, think she sure. yeah it's a, i found a very interesting take in season 2 so so th- that's really it right i mean uh, you come back from a hard day of work and then you watch indian matchmaking and you're like grinning from ear to ear just yeah. because of how fun it is and i promise you bollywood vibes is crazier than last season i i love the first <laughs> season i i really like the ending the way the way it came together i'm a huge shahrukh fan but oh, nice. yeah really looking forward to it coming back right uh, my wife and i are connoisseurs of reality tv uh, oh lovely uh, so so we we're, we're waiting a bit bated that was that. one learning for me i sort of always assumed maybe just because of a female audience loving reality more mm-hmm. the number of uh, male audiences and members who watch bollywood were surprising to me but yes it's a we look at it more as like a fun light hearted show which gives you you know a really unfiltered side of bollywood yeah. and that's really like the fun aspect of it so that's coming up we have um we launched a, a doc series franchise called Indian Predator the first season was the butcher of delhi mm-hmm. and we have the second season coming out diary of a serial killer right and um, that's as chilling as it sounds <laughs> it's it's set in uh, you know up and allahabad and a journalist going missing mm-hmm. triggers off a series of events that leads to a discovery of a diary with more than his name on right. it right. so 14 other names and a plethora of sort of discoveries i won't spoil it for you yeah, i hope you will that watch it that sounds amazing yeah yeah it is and it's actually uh, i think it's in the trailer yeah it is in the trailer uh we actually interviewed the serial killer so it's it's his narration oh wow yeah in not really his narration i think that would be inaccurate but it is his telling of his side his point of view yes his point of view and uh, he is a really deeply interesting character right he has three kids they're called Adalat, Andolan, and Zamanat. Wow. Yep. Wow, man. <laughs> I have heard some very interesting name trios. The previous funniest one or most interesting <laughs> one that I'd heard was Victoria, Columbia, and Challenger. <laughs> Indian kids, right? Are you kidding me? Victoria Mishra, Challenger Mishra, Columbia Mishra. That's insane. Right? That's lovely. But this one tops that. This is crazy. This is this is this next is level. crazy. Yeah, because they all firmly believe that he's innocent. So and that oh, wow. yeah, as fourteen uh, names in a diary and many corroborated, but yeah. 
that's amazing. I think true crime is one of those crossover genres that I'm very proud to say that podcast, as if I'm like the prime <laughs> yes. minister of podcast. But uh, it's podcast that has yes. really pushed that into the mainstream, right? I remember way back when, and now 2017 sounds like way back when. Now, I know, it, right? Not that. Uh, it's five years. Five years. It still feels like <laughs> yeah. pre-pandemic, before yeah. pandemic. Pre, yeah, there's an era now. There's an era yeah. now, right? And I'm so glad that, that uh, we're seeing that sort of take up in video as well. I want to ask you this one specific thing about fiction though scripted stuff and this is something that I've always felt that it's a grammar that has emerged out of the medium right when I was at TVF we would do 5 episodes 7 episode now I think the 10 9 10 episode format has been solidified season format has been solidified I don't think there's a no? format I think it it. I mean and if there is I wonder if there should be one or it which should is, be which is what my one. question was going to be that do you think this is how the form settles or what's your thought on that Again, go back to, you know, how personal it is, how personal content has become, really. Sure. There are days if you show me like 10 episodes of 45 minutes in that stack up, I'll be like, oh God, no, I'll never sleep. Let me not see it. But then there are days when I just want to dive into something deeply meaningful. Mm -hmm. Like I recently saw six seasons of Downton Abbey. Each right. one has 10 episodes or nine. Right. And they're all 50 minutes. Right. So sometimes you just want that really like, deep meaningful sort of engagement and then there are days where you just want to watch that quick dose of entertainment before you sleep so I think one is just diversity again mm -hmm. and the other is really the fundamental which is the strength of the story you know expanding the story for the sake of the number of episodes or right. the duration of the episodes I think is very inorganic and I think that's one of the the truest delights of the medium to be able to tell your story for just what it is mm -hmm. as opposed to having to stretch it or concise it where you really don't feel you get the full essence again and the second part is the format if it's a sitcom You'd love to be able to do like a 22, 25 minute or yeah. not have the limitations of saying, oh, your slot is this much. So you can, no matter what the story may be, you can't exceed even 30 seconds. So that flexibility is important, I right. think. It really goes down to how rich your story is, how amazing your screenplay is. And I think OTT allows the flexibility, which I think everyone, all creators and you would know, are reveling in it. So Kota Factory is five episodes. Yeah, yeah. We have Rana and I do coming out, which is, I think, 10 episodes. So it has to be open. It has to be flexible. Right. Kota Factory, incidentally, was my last show at TV. Oh. I was so proud when yeah. uh, we found out that it was going I know. on Netflix. It was, and it was how great. much our, fan, our members enjoyed it. My God, they really enjoyed the second season. We were working on season three, so yes. Yeah, I think you have, I mean, TVF and Netflix pulled together two of the biggest, most promising digital crossover stars, right? With Jitu and Hasas. Yeah. It's, it's it's awesome. Of course, Mayur is great. Yes. The entire story is great. Every yeah. character is yeah. great. But what, what a great story. Let me ask you this back to true crime. What about true crime in video is really working in India? And I think when I say true crime, I'm meaning true crime documentary, that whole reality, unscripted reality sort of space, right? Yeah. What about it is clicking in India? Because historically, I was going to say traditionally, and there was like nothing traditional about this, <laughs> but historically, it's not been super successful, mm. right? It's not been a very sought after genre. Right? I wouldn't say super successful because there's been great stories that have been put I together. I actually beg to differ. In whatever form and rendition, if you look at, you know, our linear TV, mm -hmm. shows like Crime Patrol and Savdhan right. India have been running for over a decade. Right. India loves its true crime. Right. You know, and so those are the linear TV examples. I'm saying news, look at news oh, is a rendition yeah. of true crime. And then there is the evolved version of you know, putting together our cultural experience, mm -hmm. our sort of understanding and a deeper dive into our environment to really understand what's happening around us. And I think that's really what documentaries do because a hero's journey is really fun to watch in a passive way. But right. if you add to that a, a reality and, a, you know, a true sort of nature of that story, the way people respond and connect with it, mm -hmm. you know, I think that's one of the primary things that, oh my God, I can't believe this happened for real. So, which is why if you see when we announced all our titles coming up, it really is about getting real mm -hmm. because it's getting real through documentaries, getting real through unscripted reality. It's getting real through even comedy with Kapil Sharma sort of telling us his story in the way we saw in his special. So I think one of the things is really that a true story, 
uh, and that journey which makes you just sit up like i was telling you earlier about those three kids right. of the serial killer or the i'm going to just say adalat andolan, uh, andolan zamanat zamanat man to check that yeah yeah but <laughs> are we going to call the episode that no we not no no no, no. no <laughs> don't do that Come we call, we're going to call this episode Every Night is a Netflix Night. That's what we're going Yay, to call it. Yay, that's fun. Yeah. We um, love that. I'm just checking the names for you just so that I've got them. Absolutely right. Yeah. Zamanat, uh, Adalat and Andolan. Yeah. Beautiful. Beautiful. I mean, hat tip to the guy. <laughs> I on know. That, on that his note, wife is called Poolan, so yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> not, not the Poolan. Of course, yeah. of course. But yeah. on that note, we're going to go into a quick break. Back with Anebami talking about Netflix in India in 2022. right after these messages and we're back this is storytellers and story sellers i'm vinit kanabar i'm talking to netflix series head india tanya bami before we went into the break we talked about what netflix was doing in terms of creating content different genres how 2022 is really netflix is year yeah, what i want to talk to you about now tanya is is you tell us about what your influences are what you look at when you you know look evaluate a story i'd love to know what point of view you're really bringing to the table and saying hey this is what a tanya bami series might be oh like. my god that's you're really putting too much you know sort of allocating too much to me we rely a lot on our creators and you know what they bring to us so this is too much but i started out as a person who was convinced that i have to be a doctor which evolved into being a genetic engineer which i studied for and then one day i went to across the campus at safaz mm-hmm. and i saw a student film which was done by you know the course scm there's mm-hmm. a popular course and i fell in love and i was like i was actually deeply concerned about being a genetic engineer and spending my whole life alone in a lab with all credit and we we know we need them Absolutely. they need to make the vaccines and all of that yep. and it's a pretty cool career i'm just adding these safe like disclaimers <laughs> <laughs> but i was getting very concerned about just sitting and by a desk and that's really not me and when i saw the student film i just looked at it and i was like oh my god i know i can do this right and i just switched and that's really how my journey began and from there i think uh, just learning to find your voice i started out at mtv mm-hmm. and this was like that great golden phase of mtv before it became like many music uh, videos just back to back this was we made content we expressed ourselves so just finding your voice your creative voice and really having that opinion it was a very foundational journey to a lot of non fiction in india on uh, you know some of our leading networks star z etc to actually then finding my true calling which is scripted storytelling which was at woot i used to lead series for them right and from there began this wonderful ott journey i feel like after 23 years of working i think the last 7 8 years in ott have really been the ones that i was actually made for so it's really really exciting i feel this is just the best phase of content Absolutely. to be able to just tell so many diverse stories is what is really exciting for me this medium is really about just being able to tell i get super excited with With, you know new ideas and different ideas different genres so for me to be able to work on such a diverse slate is like a dream come true it's something that every content person can only pray for and netflix really allows you that it allows you that freedom i always say that netflix is like being in a like a kid in a candy store right when you can actually bring in the candy right. you can you uh, decide yeah, what's going to be on what, stock what kind of candy do you want to stock and it's so exciting how enabled we are how sort of supported we are to really bring our best is amazing it's really which is actually a testimony to all the films the series the unscripted content that we are putting out is because you know if we can think it if we can dream it we do make it happen love it i think what i really resonate when you said that is that when you're a viewer on netflix as well it feels like you're a kid in the candy store yeah. because there's so much great yes. stuff to check out i think that feeling really really flows through and that's beautiful let me ask you this just to round off the frustrations of creation right and i'm, I'm sure there are many in india it is still a sort of organizing market where we're still yes. figuring things out yes. but tv had its own 
challenges challenges and, and restrictions strengths, yeah of course of course yeah. right um, i mean you're in everyone's house everyone's got an appointment in the evening yeah. um, with you right so a lot more cultural capital at that time with tv as well now that Correct. that's what ott is brought but the freedom of the range of storytelling is there a problem of plenty that you face sometimes is is it a tough is, is it tough to make decisions about hey what are we going to make i think problem of plenty in a good way mm-hmm. i think the challenge is really how do we keep topping ourselves right you know how do we make the next one what do we do after delhi crime which is going to be bigger and better than delhi crime because mm-hmm. i think delhi crime is fab absolutely right after house of secrets then we have an indian predator and they're sort of you know in the same space mm-hmm. but they're very different right and we have a sacred games and then we have mumbai mafia which is a, a doc series also coming so i think it's really about understanding what our members like it's understanding really what's the next best we can deliver in terms of freshness of idea mm-hmm. even if it's within the same genre it's a different treatment something distinct and novel because it's very easy for things to sort of mesh into each other right you know you wonder if you do a sacred games then everyone trying to do another one of those and then do you get lost as the you know primary title and that it. tends to happen right i mean one success leads to a lot of sort of yeah. i wouldn't say copycat but a lot of people trying to be okay in the same genre how can we serve the same audience yeah. Yeah. that kind of thing right what do they say what's that saying that imitation is the best form of flattery Absolutely. right so i i wouldn't go as uh, you know sort of but the saying to is say yeah <laughs> that it's imitation but it's it's inspiration right so i think just really finding that new clutter breaking idea mm-hmm. month on month week on week hopefully is really what our um, struggle is i don't mean struggle like it's hard mm-hmm. i think the creative community is as excited as us as executives you know wanting to really bring out like so initially everyone came with that one passion project that pet idea that had been cooking forever and it was delightful because you can actually see the joy in their eyes when they're sort of you know talking about that idea you know that this has been cooking for years and what a pleasure it is to actually hear it and if someone has actually articulated it clearly mm-hmm. has a very clear idea about where they want to take it it was like many magical narrations let me say to ha- actually hear that and now it is about looking at our environment and i mean in terms of like the life and times of our generation or just really what's happening in the content landscape and the entertainment landscape and saying you know what's the squid game from india mm-hmm. and by which i don't literally mean the same genre yeah. but what is going to be as breakout as distinctive that is going to really cause that kind of sensation that right. you know a delhi crime one as an emmy veer das got nominated will couple get nominated what will be the next big thing i think we are very honestly we compete with ourselves mm-hmm. and i mean like the global version of all of us right. various uh, sort of netflixes so i think just delivering the best delivering success delivering entertainment and actually just keeping our members entertained with untold undiscovered stories that's really the goal love it i think the opportunity that a global streaming major which is also a prestige creator yeah. in that sense uh, that's brought to india and putting a lot of indian creators on the global map i, I remember seeing sam and bisos posts about jadugar being in yes. number 4 or number 3 yes. yes. and i was like oh it's amazing man. actually jadugar we've had uh, what four of our titles trend in the global top 10 like mm-hmm. the last one i think is darlings yesterday right, right. was number 4 on the global uh, top 10 non english films list we had aranya ke kali kali aankhe the fame game she season 2 kapil sharma special oh yeah she was there as well yeah, yeah. yeah. and you know and every single title that we launch in india it's so overwhelming and so exciting that it always in the top 10 mm-hmm. so it's almost like our members have been waiting for us to get roll out our slate and they sample everything they watch everything they enjoy everything they talk about everything so just in terms of like you know what we were hitting out at i think that's happening it's very encouraging and it's very exciting i love it i mean we've complained 
for so long that hey when does indian content go global right sure we don't have something the stature of squid game which took over the world for a while and soon. i'm sure it will happen soon yeah. exactly right <laughs> but it's great to see that we're taking the strides yeah. towards that no right? and our future slate is actually i think geared up for that like mm-hmm. i i always say that this like in 2022 uh, the titles that we've rolled out are the titles we could roll out so mm-hmm. far mm-hmm. you know it's what got ready and what we were happy with and we rolled that out and very soon you know that curation of the slate that one dreams of i think that's that's sort of happening now delhi crime has you know shaped up amazingly fabulous lives of bollywood vibes is a delight right we have the second season of indian predator we have indian matchmaking we have mumbai mafia right. which i talked about as right. well all these are delightful in the space and then there's a very robust scripted slate there's a film slate so it's exciting times and there's a lot to come i love it i know I'm sure you get asked about green lighting a lot. Yes. I'm not going to ask you about green lighting. Okay. Okay. I think we talked about this before we started recording. It's about a compelling vision, it's about clarity, it's about obviously credibility, are you a credible creator and stuff no, like that. No, sure. that, that's actually not something that we necessarily apply. Sure. I think it's it's really about the distinctive nature of the idea because I think that's really what our members are seeking. They're mm-hmm. seeking what is that one differentiated idea and I think these stories are format agnostic so they don't really care if it's a documentary or it's a scripted series as long as it's a compelling idea sure. and that's really like liberating for creators and as far as creators are concerned I think we work with you know all kinds of creators we work with known and established creators we work with young voices mm-hmm. for example uh, the first season of indian predators you know made by vice right. the second season of it is made by india today right. and the creator is dheeraj who's making at this scale for the first time and he's done a tremendous job he's backed by a solid sort of organization mm-hmm. like india today so that they can you know provide him with the necessary we're not really particularly friendly towards the documentary genre as a country right. you know we're not as sort of wired up with cctvs etc the the research material is a little difficult to get by so it is a very cumbersome genre to actually turn around mm-hmm. so the kind of commitment that a young boy, a creator like uh, dheeraj has brought has been tremendous Love it. you know and at the same time we're working with experts like Mr Bansali doing Hira Mandi for us we have Rajan DK we have Sudeep who's doing a title for us we have uh, Hansal Mehta's next scoop we work with the experts because they you know they know they have the ideas they uh, they're really sort of putting things together but we also think that this is a medium if you don't look at the young voices the emerging ideas it'll be such a loss so if you look at like one of our earlier titles decoupled is a title that uh, was directed by Hardik Mehta he just done one film mm-hmm. and he's he's delightful right. you know manu joseph is a known journalist but this was his first scripted series so it's i think it's really about where the idea comes from how deeply it connects how it moves you emotionally and of course yes that clarity of vision is critical love it there was a fabulous summation of what you're working with right now what i wanted to ask you though and especially because you've had such a rich and diverse experience in putting stuff together is what are according to you and from the creators that you meet what is the sort of tools or processes for pitching to you or for putting something together right i'm not even pitching to you that's very, that's a very narrow perspective but are show bibles the new grammar are you looking at people presenting expanded visions or is it still the old school conversation narration methodology that's working i'd love to know this because very very few people seem to be discussing this in detail at least outside the fraternity and i'd love to get your thoughts on this right from the creators you meet and engage you know as a country we are so well entrenched as in the film industry right, right? that there's a process there which is standardized mm-hmm. for us to have a one shoe fits all approach on series which people are actually still doing their first series mm-hmm. you know more, a lot of the creators it would be a pity and it would be restricting right so we don't really have rules in fact netflix is actually known for no rules no rules, rules, rules yeah uh, we don't really sort of put down any hard coded guidelines i think the idea is to understand what is it that is in the minds of creators mm-hmm. what is it that they're setting out to make and for that if you know we begin with a basic sort of story synopsis or a concept note or even a conversation sometimes but the written 
word is always clearer and eventually i think you know when we put something into development we'd like to have a very clear understanding of the overall vision mm-hmm. of you know what the appeal of this title will be how differentiated it can be and how franchisable is it sure. i think those are the important things but you know it can be a concept note it can be a pitch deck it can be a what is now called a pre bible right. and then there is a bible and um, i think uh, as the industry is maturing in the series space i find it delightful that now people are coming to us with you know really cooked idea mm-hmm. as opposed to sort of testing waters which was yeah. happening earlier now people are just coming and saying here's the bible we are making this show would you like to make it with us and it's it's amazing to see it mature to this level in like under 3 years it's it's really been sort of amazing to see people make their first series learn from it input into the next one and it's like exciting times ahead man I'm I'm so glad to hear that. And I I've, I've been hearing that from other conversations as well that it has matured and moved moved forward. 100%. Yeah. I remember one there was a time when we were entering tripling oh. into the Asian TV awards. Oh, nice. I wrote the Bible post facto. <laughs> <laughs> After the show has been a hit, they like we need a Bible. I'm like, "What?" What's that? But that that was a very common practice it earlier. It was right on linear TV. So the thing is, only we call it OTT, right? Like right. in the in Hollywood, these series are called TV. Like right. it's the TV uh, non-linear TV or whatever you call it. No, you just call it called TV. TV yeah. Like it's in Netflix in the US, it's called TV. Right. There's films and there's TV. Right. So there isn't a very big distinction, and soon it will not be over here as well. I hope. Yeah. You talked about. franchiseability general viability of production as well how are those calls taken or, or what are your inputs there if you can tell us with an example maybe of oh, hey we figured this was the vision but this made it more viable if there's something some notes that you can share oh so we don't really prescribe mm-hmm. very very consciously mm-hmm. we feel it's a, a you know it's a creative uh, this every creative discussion is sort of like a creative negotiation right you know either you convince me or i convince you right and i don't mean that with any arrogance i literally mean it as an idea can come from anyone and the minute you're that open minded to actually hear and listen deeply to ideas that people have to thoughts that people have that may not be in sync with what you have have thought of as a creator or as an executive i think you get the best version of something because it's a very immersive format right, right? unlike a 2 hour or a 2 and a half hour sort of rendition of an idea this is sometimes 6 8 hours and it's no sort of not taking away anything from the creator but stringing something through 8 episodes 6 episodes 10 episodes requires a clarity and i think a lot of support which is why right. the concept of writers rooms it isn't really like one writer who's stringing through eight episodes of 40 minutes 45 minutes is tough it's very very tough so series is definitely more collaborative so i think at the heart of you know what what you're asking is we do we read the material that is presented we try and understand the vision we sort of discuss and get to the heart of what the creators chasing really and if there are ways to strengthen their own idea we make those recommendations we share notes which are never prescriptive like sure. i was saying it's more to sort of say that do you think you could do this and it will become a stronger story okay an example we listen very deeply to what our, our members and our fans like so in masaba masaba season 1 the equation between nina ji and masaba was and you know their banter as mother and daughter was really appreciated so we we as a team and you know our partners uh, ashwini and sonam they were really open they were like yeah of course we should amp this up and so we've amped up the mother daughter you know run ins a lot more right. for example and that's something that's been called out even this season right. so it's 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 actually just to build together i really feel it's a very constructive process it's mm-hmm. it's not to it's not challenging it's not to poke holes it's actually to build something well together and um, i i think the creative community is very open minded everyone's keen to listen because also i think we support them enough for them to know that it's actually all to enable them to do their best sounds like a dream i mean it really does <laughs> i mean it's it's i'm saying it in a very nice way also yeah, i'm sure there are hiccups <laughs> along the way but yeah creative discussions are never as yeah, know, easy but at least when you go in with the attitude that you just yes. just shared with us i think your building towards something that is a collaborative process you're both sort of building towards 
the best product possible, right? It's you know what is exciting is that everyone's so keen and it's so humbling for us mm-hmm. to do their absolute best on Netflix that if we didn't support them in that, you know, like when we did Ranveer versus Wild, he was very nervous. He was, you know, saying that, you know, will it work? I was like, Ranveer, you know, we won't have you on Netflix and not have it work. That can't be on yeah, our hands. Yeah. So we will support you. We will do whatever is really needed to make it work. And that's really our responsibility. So whether it's, you know, the marketing, etc. If it is really what people expect of us, but the support in terms of being able to make the content as differentiated, as aesthetic, as compelling, that's our job as the creative team. Love it. My last question to you is about comedy. I feel like, We've skirted around comedy a little bit. We we talked about it. How are you looking at that space really coming together in India? There's a fast love section that you're doing yes. um, as well. But your notes on the future of comedy. Oh my God. Uh, comedy in 2022 <laughs> in India. <laughs> So we started with a, you know, with like, I think the highest we could hit out with, Mm -hmm. we have to top that, which is uh, topping the Kapil Sharma special. So we're working with Veer. He's, you know, excited to put together something. He's very, very excited. Actually, let me not underplay this at all. I think comedy is the toughest genre. Yeah. Cracking a good special. Oh my God, it was my learning on Kapil's special. We worked on it for a year with him, you know, uh, to get him to move out of a slight comfort zone Mm. of what he does. And he does it so wonderfully. I don't know for how many years and it's entertaining every every time. So to get him to actually step out and talk about himself. Like I squirmed when you asked me about me. I can't believe that Kapil was, (laughs) you know, he was was shy to talk about himself. And when he did, he really enjoyed it. So mm-hmm. I think it's it's not just comedy is never really just a piece of content. It's too personal. Right. It uh, lands up becoming very very internal for the artists to find that material, and that takes time to cook that material. That takes longer, and then to rehearse it. You know, believe it or not, but like experts like Veer and Kapil they have slaved over their specials they have rehearsed and rehearsed and rehearsed till they feel they're ready because it is a part of themselves that they really open up so that's the specials so we we are being um, very curated about mm-hmm. our specials and in terms of uh, you know what next on the comedy format side and the other sort of variations of the genre we're cooking something exciting with Kapil so mm-hmm. hopefully soon we we did Decoupled was a sitcom. Right. We're very excited about sitcoms. There's something with friends of yours. I will not spoil it mm-hmm. <laughs> for now that we are, we're working on. Uh, we should be green lighting it soon. So yeah, very dedicated, very committed to comedy, but a really tough genre to crack. You know, I think India is unique that way. Yeah. We have comedy in everything. We do, right? We yeah. Do. So when, when I like Raj and DK, I don't know how not to call their shows funny. Yeah. Because they are, yeah. but they're also thrilling and they're also dramatic and they're also whatever else. Right. Similarly, there's so much of like comedy throughout our slate. But this pure play comedy, these are the, you know, ones that we've managed to, with much like commitment and effort, managed to land these. Love it. Outside of India, what are some of the shows that you've seen from the Netflix table that have felt aspirational to you? Like, hey, this is what we want to create. Right? And I'll give you mine as if that matters. Please do. It's so nice <laughs> to hear. When you were talking about specials, right? Like in my head, the Bo Burnham inside, it was like, man, that's a new yeah. Netflix special. right? Because otherwise you've yeah. had the stage performance, old sort of special model, but this was something unique, pushing the boundary. But yeah, this stuff that you've seen Netflix put together elsewhere that, that you think oh, really I pushes the boundaries. Oh, I love the reality that Netflix US does. Right. You know, whether it is Love is Blind or whether it is Too Hot to Handle. I don't know if we'll ever do that, but would love to. Please do. Please <laughs> we, do. Please wait. <laughs> it's all coming. <laughs> I'm, so I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a dedicated Love Island fan. I have seen every moment of Too Hot to Handle. I have seen there's this Raghu Rajiv show on a platform that we will not name on this show. No one will understand what you mean. Uh, After 14 seasons or something. <laughs> so, so, dedicated follower of reality shows. And they are making a dating reality show for us. Oh, lovely. Yes. Lovely. Uh, it's called In Real Love, IRL. Right. And uh, we are very excited about that. We, you know, I think uh, for everyone who loves Indian matchmaking and anyone who loves Love Island and anyone who loves Temptation Island, this is, this is an you know, a creation by, I feel like the guys who do reality in the way that India loves it. Now I need to know when it's coming. 
Soon. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Very soon. I will tell my wife. <laughs> yes, oh, it, it, it's a really fun one. I was watching Ep One and grinning from ear to ear. So it's a really cute, feel good, happy, fun, and a little crazy show. Love it. Yeah, love it. And there's Social Currency, which is another reality show, which has eight influencers locked up in a house for 21 days, mm-hmm. testing what they do best, which is influence people. Right. So it's really putting your money where your mouth is, and uh, that's a that's a homegrown format. That's something that we've developed, and we are excited about it. So we have reality with like regular. people like us and we have you know influencers and we have bollywood vibes and we have indian matchmaking so we're doing all kinds of crazy things so i was very inspired by what the us does in terms of reality and actually very excited that a lot of our ideas is something that is exciting like our teams in the us as well that they're, they're looking at it and saying hey this is a cool idea yeah. so we actually uh, we have uh, a very open exchange of ideas across uh, countries and teams so i enjoy that that of course the us and the korean scripted shows i think they are fab squid game was a revelation mm-hmm. and i think just how deeply the creator felt about it was just you could feel it you could see it man the detail in which oh i'm not going to God. go into like how it is production design porn but oh we're not going God. to do that right yes. yeah but like i love uh, i love Bridgerton I love stranger things I also love you know their crime and dogs but I am very very fascinated by what our Spain team does I think they it almost feels like it's like quasi indian mm-hmm. in that sense mm-hmm. so uh, you know we're adapting something that they've created that should be out later this year love what they do with money heist and right, a lot of, of their other you know franchises they do why a young adult content yeah, really yeah. well so I really enjoy that Oh, I can. This this will never end. Yeah. <laughs> we will we will save that for for when we have you I back know, on this show. I know. I was like, okay, I like this also. I like this. <laughs> <laughs> Tanya, baby, thank you so much thank for spending you. time It's with us. It's really been fun. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. I'm yes. so glad you could spend like some time. Like you said, the first podcast, and I really enjoyed it too. <laughs> Amazing, right? So before we entered. The recording studio. I asked Tanya if she'd ever been on a podcast. She said no. As you know, I love having folks who've never been on a podcast on this show exactly for this effect. Because yes. at the end, they're like, "Man, I should do more of this." Yeah, and it was a conversation. I mean, it's just these two giant mics. But other than that, it's just a conversation. Exactly. Yeah. Right. Exactly. So yeah, don't do PR interviews. Do my podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Or do both? Or do both? I'm joking. <laughs> That's it on this episode of Storytellers and Story Sellers. Tanya Mami, thank you so much for thank being here. Thank you so much. If you like this episode, tell a friend, rate the show, tell more friends, get them to listen to the show. And then rate the show and watch Netflix. Of course, watch Netflix. <laughs> They've got some amazing, amazing content coming out. I don't think you need me to tell you to watch Netflix. You've got nothing better to do with your evening. Every night is a Netflix night. Yay! That's it. Thank you. <laughs> You're so funny. This is Vinit Kanavar saying goodbye. <laughs>